that could be the worst thing ever for a musician, couldn't it be? In today's Patreon request from Katie Abbott, we are back on McFly, and this one is an interview reaction where McFly talk about coming back from their hiatus in 2019. I didn't even know that hiatus in 2019 are coming back. Oh, whatever. Who cares? It's McFly and it's an interview. So check it out. Okay, let's see why Katie wants me to uh, watch this video. I just, I just wondered, um, McFly playing the O2 for the first time. Yeah. What does that feel like when you say it out loud? We're playing the O2 for the first time. What are the sensations you feel when you say that? Well, I thought we'd already played it. It's always Wembley. But we played it. Hey! We played it. I forgot that we played it. You know, the first thing, it's just a joke. Then he goes, well, we're used to playing Wembley. I love the sarcasm in Danny, he's good. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot that we had it. It's always Wembley. But we played it as we played it as McBusted, but we oh. never headlined it as we never played it as McFly. So right. it's the, for our kind of return to playing again and being a band again, it felt like the appropriate venue, the one in London that we've not played. It's a bit daunting. We were there yesterday doing some filming, it's big. and it's, it's, a, it's a big old, big old space to fill. It is. It's very. It's three tiers. Of seats going all the way up, you know what I mean? I went, I went to the O2 watching Snow Patrol years ago, and it's like it's, I was near the top as well, and it's properly high. They're doing some filming, and it's, it's, a, it's a big old, a big old space to fill. Um, so that's a little bit daunting. <laughs> I haven't actually thought about it. Till you asked me, I've not thought about it. <laughs> now I'm anxious. <laughs> I mean, does it does it feel as a return as a, 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 that you're making a real statement by playing there? Because it feels very much like a statement. Yeah, I guess you you know you've got to be ballsy sometimes. It's like right, come on guys, let's do this. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, it was like five months ago. Our manager, we were in a hotel room together, and you could feel something was brewing. Something was about to happen, and you know, our manager was like, guys, we've booked the O2 in November. Who, who's in? And it was like, okay, let's do this. Yeah, um, and it's just enabled us to to, to commit to it. And, um, Excuse me, that came from nowhere. That's how he feels about it. <laughs> it, it oh. his, like, it's nothing to be sneezed at, Danny. It's nothing to be sneezed at. But I get that. Sometimes you you gotta you gotta bite the bullet. Like you said, you gotta have the ballsy move, and um, you know, do the big venues. You know, you can see Tom's a little bit. You know what I mean? Because obviously it's a big arena, but you know, I love the little jokes that keep coming out. I said, well, I wasn't anxious till you first said it. You know what I mean? But now I'm anxious. That's, 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 that's how he feels about it. It induces oh. anxiety. No, we're all good. We're all good. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a, yeah. yeah, the and decision was made for us. Exactly. Someone just booked it and said, if you're gonna, are you going to turn up? And we all said yes. So in that case, that begs the question, if someone hadn't booked it and said, right, you're doing it, would you have ever thought about playing it? Would you have ever dared about thinking playing Blake? Yeah, well, it's not a job to make that cool, is it? <laughs> <laughs> With, that's other people's risk, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> we just do what we're told. Management pulls the strings. On, uh, Tom, you, you mentioned that you felt like, I think you spoke perhaps for half on the band, I don't know, but you said you felt like there was a, a void in your life and in your, perhaps your lives mm. uh, during the hiatus. Mm. Um, right. How? What, did, what was that like? Was it was it every day that you felt that there was a kind of part of you missing, or yeah. would it just did it kind of every come to you sort of in waves? Now, well, I the... think it's been three years personally for me. The first two years, the first year was the toughest, and then I think after a couple of years, I kind of made peace with it and, and tried to accept that there was nothing I could do about it. Mm. Just stop trying to force the issue, and, yeah. and just hope. And believe that it will happen. So yeah, that's me personally. Yeah, I feel like it's been a real, like, emotional journey. But I'm sure for all of us, we're trying to figure out what happened to us and why, why the band wasn't happening. And I feel, I feel like at first, I almost found it easier at first, just to be like, I don't think it's gonna, like, I just gotta get, get on because it's not gonna happen. Like, and and then it just suddenly the realization of that. There were like moments where I'd see something about McFly. I actually one of the most emotional moments was I saw a performance of us. And I, was, I looked at my guitar and it was sitting on my wall. No, it was in the case. The guitar case was next to my wall. And I was like, I've been on such an amazing journey with that mm. guitar. I yeah. travelled all around the world playing with you guys. And now it's just sitting, gathering dust in the corner of my room. And I just... that... In so much of a, um, a 
in the public eye, if you like, for so long, doing so many shows, traveling the world, this, that, and the other. And then when it all comes to an end and they all like split up and what have you, if you sit there looking at the things that you, your memories and stuff and the, the old videos, and then obviously the seeing you, the guitars that you've played and what have you uh, going through the years, when you sit there thinking, was it all for nothing? You know what I mean? Do I need this anymore? Do I want to do this anymore? All the questions that people ask themselves when, you know, they want to maybe get back into music or maybe ha is it done? Are we finished? Because sometimes bands have a shelf life. Sometimes they're everlasting, aren't they? You know what I mean? So maybe he was in that limbo state where will we do it again? Will we not? You know what I mean? And, and I can imagine that playing on your mind. And then you have that realisation a bit like what, um, Harry said, where, you know, shall we do it again? You know what I mean? Are we going to do it again? Or accepting that you might not do it again. Do you know what I mean? There's always that what if. Or, you know, you got to, like you say, you got to have the balls and, and uh, bite the bullet sometimes. Playing with you guys, and now it's just sitting, yeah. gathering mm. dust in the corner of my room. And I suddenly felt like this overwhelming <laughs> sadness of like, what are we, like, where's the band? Like, what are yeah. we doing? Um, so it's been a real kind of emotional journey. When uh, cab, cab drivers asked me what I did for a living, I changed uh, musician to magician, and that just stopped them asking any more questions. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good story, though. Yeah, Because you could then disappear without paying. Way! Hey! Maybe like, wow, what happened? Ah! Um, so the, uh, the interview has got jokes as well, we see. <laughs> I like Dougie's funny. Disappear without paying. Yeah. And maybe like, wow, yeah. what happened? <laughs> Um, sorry to kind of like give you maybe a thought of how much you could have saved on mm. cab fares. Um, we, we, and you we also talked about your friendship as well, about how it, it reached quite a low point during during that period. Or yeah. was, was it yeah. how how bad was it? If you don't mind me asking, was it literally ignoring phone calls, texts? Was it or was it just not even reaching out to one another? Yeah, it was it's more lack of a communication. Really, wasn't it? Yeah, and more a case of just not reaching out to each other and just being missing for, like when you're in a band and, and functioning as a band yeah. we were with each other all the time like for the first bit of the band we were living with each other and even then we lived after that we lived next door to each other so after an interview we'd all get in the same car we'd all go back to the same house or next door to each other then we'd all go out for dinner then we'd all hang out at each other's houses we'd go to bed and we'd do the same again so suddenly not having that yeah, and you just don't know how to communicate properly and then when there's because you're institutionalised you got your routine, you had your same shit different day with the same people doing the same stuff. It probably caused arguments that as well, because sometimes, like, yeah, I just want to be away from you sort of thing. But it's only when you actually, like, move away from that scenario or that, that lifestyle and away from the people you're used to hanging with that you'll probably then think, oh, God, I wish I was going out for a meal tonight. I wish I was going playing a show tonight. And then, you know, the realisation will set in and then they'll come back and obviously, you know, they'll start communicating again. But, but if you've been seeing some someone all the time, every day for the uh, however many years it is, then you're going to run out of things to talk about, aren't you? Because you're all together and you're all doing the same stuff. Not having that. You just don't know how to communicate properly. And then when there are slight underlying issues that you don't communicate, it just builds up and builds up. And you start inventing issues that aren't even Arguing there. Arguing and stuff, yeah. Um, and the, the problem, I guess, was just not knowing how to deal with that and not knowing the journey out. Not knowing, We all knew we didn't want the band to end. Yeah. Like, you know, none of us wanted to... That's why we never officially split up. Because all right, none of okay. us wanted that. We all wanted didn't the band to happen. Um, yeah, I think we learned how to communicate on a professional, creative level. But on a on an emotional level, especially being away, Friends it's alright. If like we'd have, you know, a flare up every now and again, it's like, mate, screw you, or whatever. But it was all for something really simple. But being away, like, and that's what I mean about being in each other, living in each other's pockets all the time. You need that break away at the same time as that camaraderie, if you know what I mean, because you will start to irritate each other. Every now and again, it's like, mate, screw you, or whatever. But yeah. it's all for something really simple. But being away, like Tom said, you create these. You create, it's like, you know, a relationship or whatever, and and, and your partner's out, and you're like, oh, she, you know, whatever. You, she's you not just, answering my text. She's not answering my calls, she's all right. You know, you, you start thinking that something's wrong. <laughs> it's that thing, it's that thing of like, oh. It's interesting you talk about sort of, um, sort of replacing the personal relationship in the context of a business relationship, because obviously you've been together for such a long time, you've been friends for such a long time, 
did, was, was that the turning point, was understanding that you could talk to each other in a kind of business capacity, without wanting to sound too stoic? No, it's never been, it's, the word business has never been kind of relevant yeah, I don't to guess. us. It's, I wouldn't say that with any sort of music, musicians or a band, because all these guys will focus on is the music when they're in the studio and stuff. The business side, you've got your manager, you've got your team, etc., to sort that out for you. All they do, like they said at the beginning of this interview, is we get told where to play, we are told where to go, etc. And, and that's obviously why you have management, middle management, etc. These guys will just basically focus on the music. And I think that's what something like that is what Harry's going to say, and maybe on a personal level as well, friends wise. I think it was more that we. We'd only ever known one thing. We'd met each other and immediately been in a band together. Yeah. And we immediately became like like great mates, best mates. And then started experiencing things that is like a one in a billion thing to experience. Yeah. And we shared that together and it was so much fun. And, and you know, the, the roots just grew deeper and more entwined, you know, and it was like, felt like this unbreakable bond. But, you know, there was, there was also we're not good at talking, so when things kind of start to bubble, it just builds and builds and builds. Yeah, yeah. And for so many intricate little reasons, there were issues that started to appear, and we started to grow between the roots. Um, and, you know, yeah. and, and now that, kind of... That's a good analogy, that. You get intertwined with each other, then you're locked together, and you're all like, yeah, yeah, we're going to start this band, blah, blah. But then when someone doesn't agree with something, or another person doesn't agree with that one, or something's bugging someone, and they don't communicate about that, it'll bug them again if they do something else similar to that what was bugging him in the first place, then it'll, it'll like I say, it'll grow in between the roots and then that's it. It'll explode. And like Danny said before, when he's argued with Tom a few times, you know what I mean? It's uh, I get, I totally get that. And that's what again comes with living in each other's pockets. Start to grow between the roots. Um, the way of and, that. You know, and now kind of it's, you know, it's not just friendship. <laughs> it's like, it's, you share so much. You share personal like mm. friendship, you know, creative, like a little bit of business, but you know, fans, family, friends, you share yeah. everything. And it's a very delicate thing, it's a very special thing. Um, and Tom's right, when you're not in that and you're apart, it's not Empty. looked after. Those things aren't looked after, and I think it's it, communication. So that's that's a simple other. thing is you turn up, you've had a bad day without saying it, no one knows. Exactly. You've got to say, like, oh, it's, we go through it together. And mm. when you're exactly. Not well, you have a bad day when you're on your own, then you're on your own. When you have a bad day and you come into work and you and people can see you've had a bad day, they could ask you about it and then you could talk it out or, you know, vent. But, I mean, like you say, when you split up, you're on your own, you know, who do you talk to? Saying it, no one knows. <clears throat> so you've mm. got to say, like, oh, it's, we go through it together. Yeah, and yeah. When you're not together, you don't go through it together. You don't know. No. You don't know those things, you know. And we've been through so much outside of it and inside of it. So it's like... You've got to, you've yeah, got that's why I think the closest thing to compare it to is a marriage, and not only that, it's a marriage between four people, and not just us, it's with a band that unites us all and the fans. It's yeah, yeah. this huge, weird, complicated dynamic that's so fragile and precious. And it's all That's why I think McFly, after hearing this, should I say, um, that's why I think McFly are so good at crowd participation, because... They don't see it as us and the fans. They see it as a collective and they get the fans involved on nearly every fucking song. You know what I mean? And they're always shouting out to them, you do this, you do that, and we'll do this. You know what I mean? I, I saw an instance of that recently when I did a reaction to um, a few McFly songs from a concert that someone had filmed and, and it was brilliant. You know what I mean? McFly are one of the best crowd-engaging bands that I've seen. Do you know what I mean? They give, up, they give the fans a lot. You know what I mean? Always great when we're together. Yeah. And the only time it's it starts to like, you know, get weird is like when there's time apart and like, why is this happening? Why is that happening? You That's know? why it's a bit like when uh, a married couple have a, have a, okay, have a break, mm. and, but they don't get divorced and start questioning what. And then the jealousy starts. You're questioning what's happening with the other one. They're off with their friend group and I'm not there. And yeah, yeah. Going, And that is literally what it feels. What it. And he's just like, laughing at that. And not communicating <laughs> well, during that period, but knowing. You still love that person, and you don't ever want to get divorced. Like yeah. that's what the band is felt like, and we just didn't know how to get back to no flight. We so, needed someone to help guide us there. Sorry to interrupt. I was going to say, so in a really crass way, is this like the makeup sex? Is this yes. is this the makeup <laughs> sex? Well, that, I I, oh, I I use the, I, I use the metaphor renewing our vows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Tom in the prim and proper way. Well, I actually, I would say that was renewing our vows. But yeah, you, you, you're right. It's the makeup sex. Okay. <laughs> Ah, that was a good analogy. I use the, I, I use the meds for renewing our vows, but I think I prefer yours. Yeah, yes. This is, that's this what the O2 is. Mm -hmm. Wee! <laughs> and, and I just want to ask about the, the lost songs as well. Um, the, 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 were these things niggling away at you? Massively. Yes. Yeah. Were they just well, I, there? They've been niggling at me for years. And Nine been, years worth. Yeah, and we like, you got writing new songs and getting new songs that you're excited about is the most awesome thing about being yeah. a band and then to suddenly not have anyone hear them is the most frustrating thing yes and we kind of rely the, the the point of a musician is to be heard is to get a message across is to get people playing your music isn't it do you know what i mean that's you don't just do i mean you do the songs for yourselves sometimes don't get me wrong but i mean ultimately if you write a song for yourself and no one ever hears it then what who you who, who you wrote that song for just yourself. Do you know what I mean? You want people to appreciate your craft and appreciate your uh, your musical talents, if you like. And Harry hit the nail on the head there by saying, you know, all these songs that you get excited about and nobody hears them. It's 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 true. To suddenly not have anyone hear them is the yeah. most frustrating yeah. thing. And we kind of reluctantly, you know, put them on the shelf for McBusted because at first we didn't know what McBusted was it was like really yeah. shelving that like and then but then when McBusted got out of control it was like okay we kind of have to run with this yeah and then after two and a bit years of that well you've got to you've got to put into context there there's two sets of fans <laughs> do you know what I mean Busted and McFly you're going to get tickets will be ridiculous like for selling out and whatever because you're not just one fan base now you've got two big fan bases you know, it's just they'll just merge, and obviously with that getting ridiculous, you know, the ticket sales will get because the arenas will probably get ridiculous, and and I get that. It McMaster have finished, and those songs still were on the shelf collecting dust, and it was just mm. really frustrating thing. And um, we, you know, before it was happening, it was just like they're gone, and that added to the whole kind of pain of it all. And and now coming back and putting the O2 in the diary. Officially means we're a band again. Spending yeah. more time together, the discussion of the songs come about. Totally excited about them again. Start listening to them again. Let's put them out. Like how we put them out. Let's tell the story and let the fans kind of see the evolution of the band. Good. And also, yeah. I think like realizing that one of the blocks that I've had like about like making the next album have been not putting out the one not putting out these songs has been yeah. one of those blocks. Because for like we, put I get it. Writer's block because you're trying to write a new song. And you're thinking there's some bangers in that in that list that's been shelved. Do you know what I mean? There's some bangers in the back there that we could actually release as our comeback to get us rolling. But if you're trying, if you're all you're thinking about is those songs that you've already wrote that nobody's hearing, it's gonna affect the way you create music in the future because you're always gonna have that in the back of your mind. Do you know what I mean? So what they're saying there basically is get these songs out, get them off the shelf, and then we can move on because when you start making music again, start writing new songs, there's nothing in the back of your mind because they've been released. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Have been not putting out, the, one, not putting out these songs has been one of those blocks. It's like we put so much of our passion and creative energy into making those songs that we, just for one reason or another, never put out. And it's really difficult to be motivated to write the next McFly album until we give those songs the life that they That's what deserve. I just said, didn't it? And uh, and I think we only just realised that like it's and white feels so um, perfect now to be putting these songs out and let and then drawing a line behind you know behind yeah. them so we yeah. can move forward. And uh, when you were listening back to them, did you do you think God these guys were good? Yeah. What happened to these tracks? This yeah, and they've literally yeah. been lost in the sense that I, I didn't even have half of these songs. I haven't even been able to listen to them. So it's been a rediscovery for myself. Being like I remember writing that and. Why did we put that out? What were the reasons why? And it's such a shame. And why it's so just perfect. Probably, probably because McFly were flying at the time they made them and they had enough songs out in the charts at the time or enough you know, exposure from other albums and what have you. And they were probably flying on the tours as well. So that's probably why they went, they went well, you know what? We'll have them as a backup somewhere, sometime in the future. And it's just like they've been put off and put off and put off. And then they've had a hiatus. So do you know what? What would, be, what would be good as a comeback is to, to get these songs off the shelf. You know what I mean? And then I think that's what they're going to say. Why didn't we put that out? What were the reasons why? And it's such a shame. And why it's so just perfect that 
now we can. Like, and the music, yeah. the way that people consume music now through streaming services, it's like starting and stuff, fresh, it's, isn't it? it just lends itself to, for us to be able to put these up once a week um, for people to have and to listen to. And then, so I feel like the next ten weeks leading up to the the O2 show is going to be like the fans going on the journey of the last nine years for us. Good. I mean, with, with That's regard- what I said. So, because you've had the hiatus. And you get your songs out now before you start coming back as McFly and you can start a clean slate, can't you? Because you've got them songs out then and everyone's going to get the buzz again because it's new McFly, new McFly, new McFly. They're playing at the O2. Let's go and watch McFly. It's a very, very clever way of coming back that. It's going to be like the fans going on the journey of the last nine years for us. I mean, with, with regard to the, the, these songs and then move, being able to move on to the next album, I mean, are there notes being shared, little riffs being shared? Well, I think like, that's what... The beauty of McFly is that we have to be in McFly for other songs to happen, you know, and Tom put it, uh, well, just a few uh, minutes ago about, like, actually it was in a different interview, wasn't it? But, <laughs> no, you see it for this one. Sorry, mate, I'll see it for that one. Um, <laughs> we'll edit this and you'll look like the genius who's come out with his life. <laughs> um, is that we need to be in McFly, so, like, we need to know what, you know, Dougie's listening to, Tom's listening to, I'm listening to, Harry's listening to. We can't just write a song randomly and go, that's our single. Right. And okay. we've not been McFly for a while, so this is kind of our first day back at work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. there are so, definitely, like, there's always seeds of ideas. Well, this, yeah. Like, oh, I've got this idea I want to show, like, to Gage. The last trip we went on to write was when we weren't really a band, and everyone's heads were in completely different places, and people were playing yeah. songs, and we were playing this one and that, and it's like, what is this? Who are we? This is so... Mm. And it became... Lost your identity. Like, you just highlighted the issues. And so, now, personally, the everything's better, everyone's more relaxed, it's more chilled and it's exciting again. And it's like, everyone's more accepting and listening and it's kind of, it's, that's when I think that, you know, that's the time everything's kind of ready to go, right? So, so what are your inspirations then? What have been your inspirations recently that have got those creative juices Pretty much just gushing? Always, always Coming back. back to like, mate, have you listened to the Beatles recently? <laughs> Honestly, it does. There's, there's and, a lot like, of it. I think that's the, the, the interesting thing about you know being a band that is not like. Are they influenced by the Beatles? Then is that is that? Because I know I've said before, some of the music sounds sixties ish in the way, but I, I would I would have said more Beach Boysy at the sound wise, um, as opposed to like what I've heard from the Beatles. You know what I mean? Oh, it'd be interesting to know if Beatles was a was a, a big influence in their career. It does. There's, there's and, a lot like, of... I think that's the, the, the interesting thing about you know being a band that there's not like one songwriter. Like you said, kind of you know Collective. everyone's influences come together, and it's, that goes back to like the stuff we listened to growing up, and that's the stuff that makes them fly special. And then, we have a love for classic songwriting as well. Like, yeah. Just good like guitar, pop, rock music, like classic songwriting, and I think. You know, in the past ten years, particularly, maybe like a lot of that's kind of been lost. We yeah. feel um, a lot of music these days is overproduced. A lot of it's done in a studio with like synthesizers and this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? So, like, good old fashioned going back in and playing the riffs uh, on your on your maybe analog systems or like guitars is is you know yeah again. Ten years, and, particularly, maybe like a lot of that's kind of been lost. We feel yeah. um, in music. Hey, so I can generate it as well, can bred from like four guys mm. friendship and like personal experiences from from instruments and like and that that's the kind of the best form we feel yeah and not trying to conform I feel like what I loved about McFly when we first started releasing music and writing music was we weren't trying to conform to what like no people weren't the radio didn't sound like five colors in a hair and obviously in those kind of songs it was just that but that was us and we weren't trying to be anything apart from the songs that came naturally and I feel like actually having this gap allows us to just do that and yeah. discover who, yeah. what band we are. Step back, relax, get your stuff out to, to get your journey moving and then start writing again. It's, I get, yeah, they needed the break to get the songs out, basically. You know what I mean? And, and just finally, um, the O2 goes well. It, 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 let's just say it goes well, right? It's a given. Mm-hmm. Yes, hope. How, how likely would a tour be? I mean, how, how would you feel about going on tour now that you have family commitments perhaps you didn't have previously? I mean, would you would you be looking forward to a tour? Yeah, not getting up at 4 a.m.? Yeah, I feel like a touring is kind of it. an inevitable part, uh, inevitable part of being in a band and it's something that we all love. Like touring in the past for us has been the thing we look forward to the most and something I can't wait to show my kids what that's like. Like yeah, coming yeah. down to the venues and hanging out and seeing catering in the dressing room and coming on stage for sound check. Like that's gonna be an amazing new experience for us all who have yeah. kids. Um, 
and you know, being on performing live in front of your fans is the best experience ever with I your can best that. friends on stage. Like you cannot beat that experience. No. Um, and so I, yeah, I can't wait for that. But the O2 first. Does everyone feel the same yeah, about two? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, yeah, yeah, that's why we've not butted in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let Tom do all the speaking. It's all right. We didn't butt in. We didn't butt in. I mean, Dougie had he said anything, has he? <laughs> He's a magician. Gents, thank you for your time this morning. Congrats. Thank you, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. That was an interesting, informative interview there from McFly. And, we, you know, it's good to see the behind the scenes stuff and their thought process into. Um, like making music you know the backstage stuff of the band how it goes on when they're recording how they get on and don't get on do you know what i mean and stuff like that. and obviously um all the stuff in between like like the 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 good stuff like saying obviously we want this tour we want to we love touring we've got the best friends on stage together we've got all the fans there playing playing live to fans is the best thing ever you know all that sort of stuff got you got quite a lot in this um in this interview about you know the backstory of McFly and uh, the way they're gonna basically come back. Not that Dougie did much. He just talked. He just said he, he rode in a taxi and said he was a magician when people talked to him. But you know, let Tom take over. I mean, he does seem to be the voice of the band more than anything. But I mean, Harry spoke a lot as well. So I don't know. Um, you can definitely see a couple of leaders in there, but you can also see that there's a lot of um, camaraderie. That's what I'm going to say, and it's uh, it was it was refreshing to see. Anyway, what did you guys think of this reaction? Let me know in the comments. If you want to check out any more from McFly, there'll be a playlist right up there. Don't forget to subscribe. More importantly, don't forget to check out the original video, and I shall see you all next time.